Hello everyone and welcome back to the Out of the Park Developments YouTube channel. My name is Alex Murray, also known as AZ Axel, and today we are going to be doing a tutorial about contract negotiations and how to be able to use that screen in particular to bring in new players, as well as offer extensions to players already in your system. So, if you've got your OOTP game open, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we're going to begin the tutorial on the All Free Agents page underneath of the Free Agents in Transactions. So if you've got your games open, go ahead and go there, or you can just watch the screen, and I'll show you guys kind of how to go through contract negotiations, what to be made aware of, so that way you guys have the best chances at being able to get these players that you're looking to acquire, or players that you're looking to extend already in your system. All right? So... We're going to go ahead and explain a little bit of information about this page right here. This is where you're going to be able to see current offers, recent signings, as well as your team finances on the bottom of the page, as well as in the middle, all the players that are currently available as free agents. Now, if you're doing a contract extension, you don't have to come here. You can go straight to the player you want to extend, right-click on their name, and just do contract extension. Literally, it's just that simple. And it will go to the exact same negotiation page that we're about to go to. But you can observe that in the bottom left-hand corner, we have our team finances. You'll want to be able to know how much money you have available for free agents and for extensions before you start offering somebody money that you just don't have. So make sure you're aware of that before you get started. And then we're going to go ahead and jump right on into offering somebody a contract. And again, the on this screen too, we also have your team financial information, which has, again, your projected budget room, which is basically your available money for free agents, which is listed right here. Your uh, future money, which is basically the money for extensions, which is listed right below it. So you can already see that we're going to be able to work with this to know exactly how much money we have. And at, it'll, it'll update as we go through the contract negotiations. It will update to show us what our new money left will be if we do that. All right? So... Welcome to the contract negotiations page. This is basically where we're going to be able to offer a player a contract, and there's different types of contracts out there. There are normally three. There is Major League Contract, which is basically a full-on Major League Contract. They're expected to be on your Major League organization, your Major League team. They are being basically told that they are worth that, and they will be on that team. And those means that they start at the minimum Major League Contract amount, and they go up from there. Second one is minor league with major league option. This is basically a way in which basically a player can be offered a contract with a bonus or basically a non-guaranteed amount. If they're promoted to the majors within 30 days of opening day, they will get that amount. All right. If they don't, they can opt for free agency. So they can leave your organization if they don't make it to the big league squad. One of the best ways to do a minor league with major league option is to do those for spring training. Players will do that, and if they retain onto your team after spring training, they get the guaranteed amount that you were basically willing to offer them. And if they don't, they go back to free agency and they go sign somebody else. It's a very popular tactic for a lot of um, quad A players, is how I call them. Players who may or may not be on a major league team depending upon the organization they are in. All right. Now, for our example, we don't want to do minor league with major league option or a minor league contract, which would be the third option, and that's just going straight to the minors. We want to do a major league contract because we want a backup infielder. And so we're going to offer this guy a contract right about here, and we can change the number of years. That's going to be the first thing you're going to notice is that the second option is number of years. We can do 1 to 10 for options of years, and I think for this example, we'll choose 5. Now, Every single season listed, we can change the amount of money we want to offer to the players. So we can customize this contract negotiation to be exactly what we would like it to be. Now, as we go through this and we make adjustments to all of this and then we submit our offer, the player is going to give us feedback up here on the top. He's going to be able to tell us if he thinks that we're not offering him enough money or we're offering him too many or not enough years or if he's just not really ready for that much of a commitment. So players will give you feedback, and if they don't like what you're offering, their contract negotiation mood will start to sour, which means they'll be less hospitable to whatever you're trying to make them sign for, and they won't be as happy, and eventually they may even decline to talk to you anymore if you keep pushing too hard, all right? 
So don't go too savage on these players because they do want to play for you and you do want them to play for you as well, but you got to work with them, all right? All right, now you can change all of these numbers for the amount that we're going to offer the player all at once if you'd like to. If we, for, uh, for this example, wanted to go down a little bit in the funds per season, we could then say use for all, and it'll change all of the seasons to match the one that we have at the top. So a good way to be able to offer a large, long contract and then not have to go in and change every single number by hand, you can hit the use for all button to be able to do that. We also have these really nifty little up by certain amounts, so increment up and increment down that you can do. So if you wanted to be able to increase some of the amounts over the course of the regular or the course of the uh, years into the future, you can do that as well. Let's talk a little bit about options. Now, there's two different forms of options. There are year options, which are basically put at the end of the last two seasons or up to last two seasons. You can do what are called team options, player options, or vesting options. Team options are ones that you have control over. Basically, a team option allows you to say, hey, I want to either you know continue with this contract for this last season or I want to decline it. Now, most players, when they see a team option, they want to buy out because a buyout means that you're going to pay this amount of money to buy out the remainder of the contract, which is usually just that last season, but it can be two seasons. Um, the buyout's going to be important for a player to guarantee at least some funds for that season. If they haven't been performing well and you want them gone, they at least get a little bit of money out of the deal. All right? So make sure that if you do that, a player may come back to you and ask for a buyout amount if you put nothing in there. You can try to make it zero, but most players want at least a little bit of a buyout. Um, not the full amount. Don't do the full amount of the contract for that season, uh, for that year. But um, at least a little bit is good to make sure the player is more hospitable to a team option. Most players do not like team options if they can get away with it. Most players do like a player option. A player option puts the control of that season in the player, and they will tell you if they are going to keep playing for your team and choose to choose to keep the option or if they decline the option and elect to go to free agency. Now, if they do that and they're still under the ability to be um, either arbitration contracted or they have played for your team for the entire season, you may be still able to offer them a qualifying offer or an arbitration offer and retain them for that season if you wanted to, all right? So that doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to lose the player. It just means that they want to renegotiate underneath of a different number, most likely, all right? Last one is vesting options. Vesting options are based upon plate appearances, games played. I believe it's innings pitched for pitchers and then a game uh, uh, pitching appearances, I believe. And this is basically where the player needs to hit a certain number of whatever statistic you're looking for to be able to have this last season or last two seasons um, continued on with. This is a great way to be able to say, hey, you're an aging veteran player. Let's make sure that, you know, by that last season, if you're not having 400 plate appearances from the previous year, then we just we just decline that last year because you're not playing enough. This is a great way to make sure that a player, you know, if they're being injured all the time, that last season, maybe you can opt out of it because that vesting option isn't met. And that's a great way to be able to make sure that they keep playing to their best ability and they're actively on the field. Now, I would highly recommend that you don't push a player that far, that they don't get to be playing on the field because you want the best of them and they want to play at their best too. So work together with the player. But if you feel like that's too big of a risk, especially if it's a large amount of money, you know, if this is upwards of, for MLB examples, I would say if it's somebody looking for $15 million or more, having a, a vesting option for an aging veteran may be a very wise decision to have because that gives them something to shoot for for the previous season to make sure they're still playing well, and it gives you an opt-out in case they don't hit that. All right? Now, in addition to these season options, there is a player opt-out. So in addition to options, there's a player opt-out. And this gives the player the ability to, outside of any, you know, vesting or, you know, um, additional uh, requirements, they can choose to simply decline the remainder of the contract. Um, so this means that you can choose any point of time after the first season 
of a contract if it's multiple years you can choose any point after the first season as a means by which the player could choose to opt out now most people who want player opt-outs are going to be rookies most of them are going to want to be able to opt out of a contract that is not rising with their value so they will opt out of the contract and try to get a new one with you or with somebody else who actually values them appropriately so most of the time a player opt-out is in a huge huge favor for the player all right now as a gm you can utilize a player opt-out if you front load a contract. So if you were to put a lot of money in the first couple of seasons and then make the last couple of seasons very, very low, you could get away with playing a veteran player more when they're younger. And then as they age, they could choose to opt out and you could save yourself some money. So there are some ways in which you could still gain an advantage with a player opt-out, but most of the time, veteran players don't even really use a player opt-out they just stick around with the full contract no trade clauses are ways for players to be able to guarantee that they can veto any trade option that they you present um so this is something that you probably don't want to include a lot of to players unless they demand it um a no trade clause again is a way for a player to be able to be told that they've been offered in a trade and then tell you that they're not going anywhere and you can't do that so this is um, really, really devastating if you've got a veteran player who has a no-trade clause and they're starting to age, they get injured, they have bad performances, and then you're stuck with their contract. So don't offer no-trade clauses willy-nilly. Only offer those to players that you know for certain that you will never trade anyways. It may just be more of a, a good faith policy at that point where you're basically telling the player, I don't intend to trade you anyways. And then if I do, you can always just tell me, no, you're not going to. The promised role is really going to be only for players who want to have that on their contract. Um, promised role just basically means that they are either in the starting lineup or they are in the starting rotation or closer role, I believe. This is basically a way to tell the player that not only are you willing to sign them, but you're willing to guarantee them a promised promise position on your team. Again, I would not be willy-nilly doing this to any player. Only do this to the players that you know are going to be starting regardless of what happens. All right? And lastly, let's talk about the incentives. All right? Incentives are different ways in which you can give players goals to be able to hit during the course of the regular season. For batters, that is minimum plate appearances, um, MVP awards, and all-star selections. For pitchers, I believe it is uh, innings pitched, I believe is what it is, as well as um, MVP awards, Cy Young, Cy Young, Cy Young awards, and all-star selection. So it's mostly the same. But basically, if the batters hit a minimum plate appearances amount, say you could do something like 550, they can earn a bonus cash amount to their salary. That's not guaranteed, so it won't go against your team's salary until it actually goes into effect. Um, but it's a good way to be able to give the player an incentive that could be enough to make them swing and choose your contract over somebody else's because there's more potential value to your contract. Um, but again, you want to make sure that you don't do too much because this will go against your salaries or your finances at the end of the year, and it won't be tacked on until the player has gotten it. So you will not know about that money being off of your finances until it does occur. This is most of the miscellaneous contract uh, or miscellaneous player fees and other player costs that we talked about in the uh, finances video. So be aware of how many incentives you have for a player. All right. Same thing for the MVP award and the all-star selection. If they do acquire either of those during the course of the regular season, they will instantly, or I believe at the end of the season, they will get the bonus for winning that award or being nominated to the all-star game. So use those as you want to. Be very wise and shrewd on how you do that. But those can be what gets you a big-name player versus another team that doesn't offer them any incentive. So the ability to offer somebody a little bit of additional potential value could be just enough to nag that one player in a bidding war. And last but not least, we'll talk about that. Over the course of the regular season, and especially during the offseason, you will make offers to players much like we are right now. 
The player has a certain amount of time before they will come back to you and tell you that they favor your offer or they will tell you that somebody else has made a better offer. You will need to be able to do bidding wars occasionally with other teams as they put forth offers that are better. You will get a response back from the player saying that the offer was, was not as good as somebody else's and you'd like more money, or maybe it's more years, or maybe it's something else. You will need to go back in and renegotiate with a player and offer them something better that they like over the other team's offer. All right, and that's how you can get into some situations where your uh, <clears throat> your negotiation mood can go sour. Managing the negotiation mood and making sure the player is happy will guarantee you the best potential chance at winning a bidding war. Also, it's important to also know if you can get that information who you're bidding against because if you're bidding against a team that has three times the amount of money you have, while you can try to raise the price over and over, you're more than likely going to lose that bidding war if they really seriously want the player. Um, and it can be devastating, unfortunately, to lose a bidding war. But being able to use some of the tactics, such as the uh, no trade clauses, the promise rules, the incentives, and options can give you just a little bit of an advantage over the AI, and you might be able to sneak out some really big-name players out of free agency with some shrewd contract negotiations. And that covers the topic of contract negotiations in OOTP. Regretfully, these negotiations weren't short, but I hope this video was helpful for you in learning how to get started with Out of the Park Baseball. We will continue to upload more tutorials and other videos down the road, so please do subscribe to this channel, and I will see you all in the next one.